in the bowels of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking innovation startup, the future. Not necessarily those and not necessarily in that order. If you're watching on YouTube, smack that subscribe button and hit that bell so you'll be notified when a new show comes online. And if you're listening to your favorite podcast service, please subscribe and please drop a note on Apple Podcasts. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now, we're going to talk AI again, folks. That's right. People who are not interested in AI, tune out now. Flip to the next podcast. Flip to the next podcast. Flip to the next video. You don't want to talk about AI? Everyone wants to talk about AI. Who doesn't want to talk about AI? So week, last week, and by the way, most of these headlines are ripped directly from my podcast, AI Daily, my new news source for AI, coming out every morning, curated by me, myself, and I, with the latest and greatest AI news, AI Daily. Dot us. So, if you've been under a rock, you probably haven't heard that there's been a Hollywood writer strike. And that was, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, so they're still striking as far as I know. Or they're negotiating up to the strike. So, right around the same time, now we're having the SA SAG after strike, which is the union for the actors. Now, if you ask me, I'm not sure why actors need actors need a union. I mean, I guess there's there's the 99.9 percent of actors that are not multi 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 millionaires. They might need some kind of protection. I don't know. I mean, if you ask me, as a libertarian, I think the time of unions is past, and we don't need unions anymore. Maybe we need something else, but unions, in their current form, probably not required anymore. But I digress. This is not about unions. This is about a very interesting development in AI and what the unions have been asked for. So a while back, of course, everyone is concerned. Everyone who's a writer is concerned about AI because they figure, oh, I could just go to ChatGPT and have them write my script. So instead of writing a script, themselves, instead of hiring a human being to write a script, they're just going to go to ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT to create a script. Now, I don't know if you've done that. I don't know if you've tried doing that, but you're not going to get very good results. First of all, you're not going to get anything new and interesting and different because there's nothing new and interesting and different in ChatGPT. It is a large language model of language that has already been spoken, already been recorded somewhere, and it's just in there. And all ChatGPT does is regurgitated. Now it regurgitated in new ways, and you might think this is something new and innovative and different. And I've talked before about how I don't feel that the current crop of AI, Claude included, is particularly innovative. But people are afraid. People are afraid. I mean, this is this is what the uh, negative. So, so I call myself the optimistic futurist. Because there's so many pessimistic futurists out there. I mean, almost every futurist is a pessimist. They go, oh my god, AI is going to come in, destroy 400 million jobs. Or autonomous vehicles will come in, they're going to destroy 4 million jobs. And they're going to come in and talk about how AI is going to explode nuclear bombs all over the place. And we're going to destroy ourselves with AI. They don't talk about how climate change could be fixed by AI. They don't talk about how education could be fixed by AI. They don't talk about all sorts of things that could be fixed by AI. But no, they talk about the negative things because, you know, that's what it is with human beings. With human beings, we are exceptionally sensitive to things that are negative. This is why if it bleeds, it leads. So people were worried about losing their jobs. The writers, the Hollywood writers were worried about losing their jobs to AI, which I guess is something understandable because if you think about it, a lot of the stuff that comes out of Hollywood is just the same kind of stuff regurgitated. This is why a lot of actors prefer to work with indie indie uh, filmmakers because they can do stuff that's actually interesting and innovative and different. But I digress. So, like I said, the writer's strike is, is, I don't know if it's started or it's ongoing, the negotiations are started. And I'm not quite sure of the details of that, but, I, but the SAG after strike, which is for the actors, is just, they're just negotiating it now. And what I thought was super interesting from this negotiation, because usually I don't follow Hollywood and actors at all. I don't follow any of this stuff at all. Celebrities, got no time. But 
I thought this was very, very interesting that one of the requests or the demands, I don't know what you would call it, from the studios is that they would take a three-dimensional high-resolution scan of the actor in question and owned that scan so that that scan can be used in the future in case something were to happen to the actor, a.k.a. death or dismemberment or something horrible. And from what I was reading, it sounded like they wanted this gratis. They wanted this for free from the actor. So I don't know about you, but if anybody comes to me and says, I want a high resolution, three dimensional representation of you, audio, video, everything that I can then use instead of you, I would be, whoa, 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 wait a second. Hold on there. First of all, who should own something like that but the individual themselves? I mean, I've had 3D avatars made of myself, and I own the 3D avatars that, made, that are made of myself. I have negotiated with the people who've made the avatars and taken ownership of that avatar because that avatar is me. And the studio is coming in and asking these actors to give up their avatar, their three-dimensional persona, just like that. It's, it's like, it's, it's mind-boggling to me. I mean, do they really think that the actors were such rubes that they were just going to say, oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, Tom Cruise is just going to say, yeah, you know, make uh, Mission Impossible 24 without me. You don't need me anymore. You know, I don't know if I'm, I'm on a... Pacific Cruise, I'm dead, whatever I am, but you know, that Tom Cruise, he's still fighting the bad guys. He's still fighting, fighting the AI entities. Mission Impossible 24, or whatever. It's unfathomable to me that there, in this day and age, that people can think that someone can come in and take a digital representation of you for free and then use it as much as they want. As far as I'm concerned, that's a, that's a no-go. And if you think about it, we really need to start thinking about how we're going to manage all this. Because it's going to start happening. And it's going to start happening not just to us, to, to celebrities. Not just to people who are have a lot of visions of themselves. It's going to happen to all of us. I mean, we are putting ourselves out there. Anybody who has an Instagram or a YouTube channel or anybody who's creating content and putting it out there and creating us enough content and putting it out there if you think about it I have like 800 plus episodes of this show I could if I fed all of this show into an AI and said create a new version of Chris and from now on from episode I don't know 900 onwards make them <laughs> like create versions of him that look absolutely real and can say the exact kind of things that he can say, the commentary that he can make on, a, on, on things of the day, and just take over and do it instead. Now, if I had the ability to do that, if I had the power to do that, I might want to do that for vacations and stuff like that, where I want to sort of go on, go on sabbatical or something like that and have my avatar do my shows for me. I mean, it might, who knows? They might be just as good as my other shows. They might even be better. Some people might actually like them better. You never know what people like. No accounting for taste. I know. You must, if you're a content creator, you've probably seen this happen. You've taken time to create a beautiful piece of content, whether it's a piece of art or a blog post or a book or a poem or whatever. You've created a beautiful piece of content. And you put it out there and you think, this is the most amazing piece of content that I've ever created. And I'm putting it out there and I think everyone's going to love it. And you get zero reaction. Zero reaction. And then you just dash off a quick piece of content. Takes you no time at all. Slap it up there and boom. That thing just takes off like crazy. I'm sure if you're a content creator, you have experienced that as well. Because there is no accounting for what people are going to want? Or is it some masterful system 
saying, oh, this is what we think people are going to want. So we'll spread that one virally, whereas this other one we're not going to spread virally. But I digress. The point of the matter is we're going to get into some l murky legal water here where we need to start defining things. So if something is a representation of me, even if it's a surreptitiously taken representation of me, because think about it, I mean, I could take all that and shove it into an AI and ask it to create a version of myself, but so could somebody else. Somebody else could come along and feed all of my episodes into an AI and say, create a version of Chris and have him say other things, deep fakes. You've seen them. We need to figure out what to do about representations of individuals and who owns them. Because if you ask me, I own all representations of myself. And even though I've signed off on them and I've made waivers saying, you know, I, I'm in this thing and you can take pictures of me, you can only use it for the purposes intended. You can't take versions of me and create avatars of me and have them do the things I do. That should not be allowed. Where is the body autonomy? So I think it's right for the actors to say, no, this is wrong. This shouldn't happen. You shouldn't be allowed to take my digital image and own it and keep it and use it in the future. That should be the actor or the actor's estate allowing that sort of thing to happen. The fact that they overreached this way and said this sort of thing is a very interesting harbinger of where things are going to go for even people like us. I might not be Tom Cruise, but somebody may want to emulate me one day. If that's the case, I should know about it. That's it for me for today. See you next time, and until then, don't forget to think future. Mm -hmm.